Hi, it's Alaska Granny. If you've been paying attention to the news, we're having new quarantines from the COVID coronavirus uh, pandemic. They've been shutting down places like Ireland, Wales, and Greece. How long until cases are rising in your communities, or are they already doing that? We could be in for another round of shutdowns, lockdowns, stay-at-home orders, and quarantines in all of our communities. That means we might need to have a bug-in type situation. If you remember back earlier in 2020, when we all first had to stay home, some of us had some real problems, some real hardships, uh, because we weren't prepared for anything like that to ever happen. But now that we know that it could happen, and we've had a chance to have uh, get back out there, go to the store, stock up on a few things. Maybe we can rethink how we can deal with if this is something that's going to happen to us again. If you watch the political debates, they were even saying it's going to be a dark winter, which it always is a dark winter. The sun goes away, but then we have light winter when it comes back. That's just part of the cycle of Earth. Don't let the political rhetoric frighten you that you're not prepared or that you won't be able to handle it because you can. Make sure you have an ample supply of food on hand and that you have a stockpile of fresh drinking water. Make sure you also have some type of water filter so that you can purify any extra water that you would need to should water become contaminated or finding fresh drinking water become a problem. It can under natural disaster type events and natural disasters are happening all the time anyway, so it's always something good to have on hand, extra prepping supplies. Make your home as safe and comfortable as possible. Do you have dead bolts? Do you have ways to lock and latch your windows? Have you done the things you can to harden your home? Make your home comfortable. Declutter things you don't need. I like to get two shopping bags. I put trash in one, and I put things to donate in another. Spend just a few minutes every day. Put things in the trash, put things in the donate, and put the other things that you want to keep away. Find places for your things to live. Then I take the bag to be donated and I immediately put it in the trunk of the car. Those things are out of the house, they're gone. Then whenever I run an errand, I stop by a thrift store and take out the bags and donate them. You can do the same thing in every room in your house. Go through your sock drawer. Some of them might need to go in the trash. Maybe you have some that you don't like anymore. Put them in the donate pile. Go through your kitchen drawers. Do you have items that just should go in the trash or some that could donate because you have too many, too much, it's too cluttered? And if you do a little at a time, pretty soon your home has more of a calm feeling, a calm sensation because you've created a comfortable space. Keep in contact with your like-minded neighbors and your family members you care about. When we have to stay home for so long, sometimes we lose complete track of our friends and family. When we don't see people for months at a time, we get dropped off the radar of, are you okay? How have you been doing? And it's nice to make those warm connections so that you know that the world still is a great place and there are still some wonderful people out there. So try to keep track of your friends and family, even if you can't see them in person. Bugging in means you have limitless supplies of all of the items that you stockpile and you can be comfortable in your home. You have the things you need, rather than if you had to leave your home when you couldn't take very many things with you, your home also allows you communications. You have radios, televisions, internet, and the phone. You can keep track of your friends and family. You can also keep track of the news. You can go on the internet, find out what's going in the world, and order extra supplies that you need. Other emergencies can also occur once we're staying home, simply because we still have things like winter storms, power outages, the water might stop running. Just know that those things are going to happen whether we're in a pandemic or not. And so prepare for those types of things to practically dogpile on you, which is how it feels sometimes. So make sure that you have an ample supply of water and that you have water also put under the sink in the kitchen, in the bathroom. Water isn't going to be just for drinking. You need some extra water for washing, for cooking, hygiene needs 
I'll put a link to a video I made about how to wash dishes with little or no water. And you also need to think about hygiene. What would you do if the water stopped running? Do you have baby wipes? Do you have ways to clean yourself? And yes, you probably need to think about having some kind of a portable toilet. You can get something as simple as a five gallon bucket with a snap on toilet seat or even put a pool noodle on it to make it have some kind of comfort. I'll put a link to a video I made about how to use the portable toilet. If all of a sudden your water stops running and your toilet won't flush, that's not the time to figure out what am I going to do now. Winter is upon us and power can go out. You need to have a way to figure out how you can stay warm in your home. It can be as simple as you close off all the rooms, your family gets in one room together, you get out all your extra blankets. You'll need to supply some light, whether it's from candles, oil lamps, lanterns, flashlights. There are many different ways. You don't have to have an open flame. We don't want to risk starting a fire in our home when we're already in an emergency situation. So if you're going to use candles or oil lamps, make sure you're extra careful that they're not in a place where children or pets can knock them over and then never leave them unattended. Don't leave candles burning and go spend time in another room in your house. Put them out. Make sure you have fire extinguishers, smoke alarms, carbon monoxide detectors with working batteries. Fall and spring are always the correct time to check those that the batteries are fresh and that you are safe. Make a plan with your family that if you do need to shelter in place again, we do need to bug in and stay home, that you're going to do the best you can to work together to be as comfortable as possible. Make a priority to share fun times with your family during days that you have to stay home. Play a game, bake some cookies, read a book together. Plan for your hopes and dreams. What would you like to do? Where would you love to go? If you could do anything you wanted in the future was bright and cheerful, especially if you have children. We need to make sure that they understand that this is temporary. It might seem like it's been their whole life. They don't remember happy times. So we want to make sure that we give them the joy that children deserve and the hope for the future. Because guess what? When children are joyful, it rubs off on adults and we can all look forward to a brighter future. If you liked my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might enjoy it. Learn more at alaskagranny.com. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel. <laughs> Hug a puppy. Mm. <laughs>